Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, second take here, take two. Yeah, I'm like realizing I needed to touch on some more stuff that I didn't uh, touch on in the last video or last video attempt. Okay, um, just to get a couple things out of the way first, um, this video is not going to concern anyone and everyone. It's only going to concern certain people and that is all right. Um, it's going to more or less only concern, quote unquote, said individuals that are tru truly of an inquisitive mind um, that truly genuinely want to get to know real authentic people. Um, I was already called out by one of two readers, uh, an Asianic gentleman and a European uh, like soccer mom next door in the collective. They are both readers about uh, being fake and or faking it till you make it in regards to towards an elderly woman, whom is i.e. a fire sign, whom is i.e. a Leo, correct? Okay. Um, number two, one, one, one on the clock. Um, I know for a fact that said quote unquote individual is what? A black widow. Okay, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Um, if you people don't know what a black widow is, because I didn't even know, I kept hearing that term tossed around in the collective because I was hearing it from another reader that was calling my mother a black widow, right? So anyway, um... <sighs> People need to go and look up research online. You're going to find some different uh, definitions of what a black widow is. Basically, it's a woman that more or less sucks a husband dry of all that he all his worth and leaves him for dead. Literally. So, then people will step back and start to understand more or less where I'm coming from on stuff. So I'm going to give people a few perspectives in regards to why I have, quote unquote, covert a disdain or hatred. Besides, I was already told in the collective that I'm, I'm, I'm secretly down low or gay. But I mean, it's kind of funny when people are constantly emphasizing that and focusing on that. But yet you don't he hear them trying to to uh, broaden their their horizon or, or understanding perspective and dive into even the other brackets of quote-unquote sexuality in regards to i.e. pan or pansexual but I'm not trying to make this video right now and go off on a tangent going into delving into sexuality or identity politics or anything like that um, this is in regards to just helping people understand why I lashed out or whatever or blew up on some old lady. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, they're, the, the old people are not poor, poor, old, poor, old people. I mean, they're old, but they're not like, they're, they're, they're not, uh, what is it? People want to treat them like, oh, feel sorry for them and sympathy and all this stuff. No. No, they're not, they're not, uh, what you call nice. No. <sighs> but anyway, um, okay. So, people don't know the life I've lived. They don't know the experience of I've, experiences I've had. They don't know the, the myriad and array of people that I have met. Um, to be able to be to thoroughly and properly compare different people together side by side and you can be able to tell and truly discern who's who and what's what so i know for a fact number 1 that someone hadn't ever been called out not even by her own family on whatever her her deviances or whatever in regards to her past now mind you i'm one to talk because i have a chock full of quote-unquote deviances 444 right but i knew for a fact too that when someone's trying to quote-unquote start kind of stuff with me or or get me to 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 address them in certain ways or whatever 
Um, I know also too that that's my cue to to bring up stuff that needs to be brought up, what whatever that's in the subconscious. Also, number two, God forces whatever is in your subconscious to the forefront. So basically, in other words, at the end of the day, you have no choice in that regard, which is correct. So you know, teachings of Cain and Abel, all that stuff. You know, it it brings the darkness to the forefront that's already existing within you. Cain and Abel teaching. So this goes beyond, like, you know, myself. Yes, I'm 60% European, 15% Native American, 15% Mexican. That is what was uh, relayed to me. Via the data that was collected via my, I want to say, saliva sample that I mailed in to 23andMe within the past few years. I don't have anything to lie about when it comes to my DNA or my ancestry. Um, it's just silly and utterly pointless. And I have never been a person that cared to to get reparations or whatever, like quote unquote said other people in the in the collective within existence. Because to me, I look at it as just people wanting to see how much they can make off of uh, uh, dead people suffering. So no, I don't really care for it nor respect that. People want to know my my viewpoints on some hot topics here. People need to just some people need to just research Billy Carson, Candace Owens, and Larry Elder and Dinesh D Souza, and they'll start to understand me better. No, I don't have a criminal background. I've been able to successfully get firearms, pass background checks, fine. Uh, I've never been a super big, big gun lover. I've never been anti-gun either. I've never been into politics, nor have I ever been a religious person. I was a non-believer turned spontaneous believer. Period, point blank. I found out the information about that. When right eye, they said right eye under quote unquote Christ starts talking about right eye and left eye in a freaking uh, morbid book about death that I got from a, a thrift store at random out here in Arizona, Phoenix area. Just like I found a book that said uh, sun devils deciphering what, what matters written on the cover at a thrift store as well. We all have unique spiritual paths and journeys to each their own. Things unfold as they should in divine timing. And I figured out coincidence. Uh, there's no such thing as coincidences. That's Coincidences is divine intervention. To those that need to hear that as well. Because I found that out randomly glancing at the TV that an old lady watches day in and day out. Whether I, I care for someone or not is irrelevant. But I have no problem calling somebody out that needs to be called out when they're constantly acting like a privileged prick. Now, a lady, a reader, a, a black and a melanin female already called this lady out in the collective. That's a tarot reader. And this is a, a, another person. So people don't even get me started I'm thinking I'm so out of line or I'm just some spoiled, entitled brat and drama queen and all this shit when, uh, no. I needed to speak up and say things to someone because I know for damn well and right that nobody ever stood up to her. She's thinking that some, she's wanting someone to fear her and be intimidated by her. I'm already used to and accustomed to dealing with quote unquote very narcissistic European women and also narcissistic melanated females too on either end of the spectrum that are not nice at all. Just like my mother on the Mexican Native American side told me stories all the time of her dealing dealing with whom she would call the Taurus bitch. Day in and day out. How she did stuff and managed to, to be able to handle metabolizing uh, her body even being able to handle metabolizing cortisol so much dealing with whomever let alone her husband and whomever else at work day in and day out, I have no idea.
because I couldn't even last a year at a food manufacturing place around one of those quote unquote would be deemed type of females along the lines of a witch and or warlock or indigos is also what they're known as or just witches 1010 I couldn't even handle a year to give people an idea, yes, I've had a myriad of different jobs, logistics, warehouse, shipping and receiving, distribution, food manufacturing, sales, and janitor janitorial, besides adult entertainment and dancing and martial arts. So, you know, yes, I ran alongside outlaws. I am not affiliated with any gangs whatsoever. Yes, I've met quite a, actually have honestly met quite a uh, few very interesting uh, people that I would genuinely deem and hold dear to me, yes, of all different ages, of all walks of life, from different states throughout the United States. I have never been outside of the United States. I have only maybe, the, the where I've gone has only been Hawaii or Maui or whatever. I want to say it was Maui, 11-11. When I was younger. But no. Um, some people. I had. I got like that with my mother. On some things I snapped off of. Towards the end. There was another reader in the collective. I forget. I think, I think it was Ascension Tarot or something. I could tell she was an Olympian. And she was the only one. That I had bumped into thus far. Anyway on my journey. That actually embodied the Olympian energy. She's the only, uh, I believe she goes by Ascension Tarot, don't quote me on it. Um, yes, she's the only one that embodies um, Olympian energy that I've met, I've seen thus far. So things are always subject to change at any given point in time. This is timeless too. <sighs> so anyway, no. I don't care to be stuck somewhere, no. It drives Aries nuts to have to be stuck somewhere, number one. And number two, have to be reliant on another person, period, point blank. Because in all honesty, yeah, despite me me uh, being a procrastinator and all this stuff and whatever going through lately, for many, many years I was independent and on my own and not only taking care of myself but other people. So I know I'm very well already equipped and and capable of being able to stand on my own two feet and go out and venture into the world uh rightfully so bravely so no problem and all the times myriad of times I've gone head first into things and, and come out on top and all right yeah so no it is actually not it is not something that Aries are action orientated yes naturally so, you know, yes, I would say 1313, I have been out of my element is correct, and or i.e. hit rock bottom is correct. So, you know, but the thing is, it's like people don't realize and understand, like I said before, they don't understand, realize the people that you've met in your life to be able to compare to, to be able to really see people for who and what they r really are. So, no, I have no problem telling any black widow off because, quite frankly, I see what they've done to people, whether it was in my family or whomever else, and what they do to men. So, if men want to judge me speaking, being willing and brave enough to touch on stuff, to touch on stuff towards men, that's not right. I mean, you're, then in the end of the day, I look at you as not making much sense. But I by no means am going to intervene and interfere with whatever also needs to be spoken on other people's behalf either. Am I still needing to grow up and mature? Um, yeah. I will happily admit to that fact too. But, you know, it's funny, too, when I've had a, one reader in the collective making fun of me and not realizing, like, I know that he's making fun of me. Yeah, it's like thinking I'm puny and weak and all this shit. And it's like, 
it's kind of funny, too, because I look at it, too. I'm like, am I supposed to care about what this person thinks of me? You know, it's like, and they don't know, they don't know the life that you've lived either. They don't know the experiences you've had. So it's just kind of like, it's really hilarious is all I gotta say. <clears throat> or dudes making fun, of, making fun of me for having like facial hair or whatever and not realizing that I'm a 35 year old broad. And the last thing I'm really going to care about is is appeasing the man especially right now when i'm focused on myself finally first and foremost and making myself happy and being content within myself and and in calling it a day yeah i wanted to keep this message focused but apparently now it's all over the place Um, just so people know, yeah, I, when I was younger, I had attempted to learn caregiving and being a caretaker, and I tried out one time at random, it was a private sort of thing, independent contractor sort of thing, but I did a trial run, it was only like something I did in a day, not even, t didn't even take a whole day or anything like that. And it had to do with a paraplegic gentleman. I want to say he was either paralyzed from the waist down or the neck down or the shoulders down or something. But I want to say more likely the waist down. Yeah, or, you know, mainly dealing with his body because of him being a football player, an ex-football player. So he had gotten an injury from sports. So basically, the guy even needed help having bowel movements, and um, you basically you had to go in the, in the circular motion in his, his abdomen and leaning and pushing. I want to say typically counterclockwise. I'm not so much sure about going clockwise. Um, in in doing that over and over again, literally you had to pump the guy's stomach to have a bowel movement. Now, I, I think to myself and look back and think, dude, why people should have just probably given the guy tea or coffee, really, at that rate, or a laxative. But who knows? For all I know, maybe that's something they tried and to no avail. I have no idea, but this was a long time ago. But, yeah, you literally had to put, like, your fingers in the guy's, uh, what is it, rectum, basically? I mean, yeah, it was pretty, you know, pretty, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Dirt is dirty work, basically. But not like I hadn't done dirty work before in kinky stuff, but I'm not going to go into that online. But, um, no, I didn't expect to go back into caregiving or anything like that, if the people really want to know. I, basically, in other words, I wasn't seeking it out, I wasn't looking for it or anything like that. Uh, my mom had passed away recently, and she was the one that was giving me, giving me and my husband financial assistance, I want to say, give or take two years, uh, Give or take, don't quote me on it, but it was around about it was around that length of time, um, helping us with bills and what have you. So before that, I had a job briefly with Machi Ice Cream, and they had let me go because I ended up getting sick. And at that time, I remember it, that was the first time that I was trying around that time, first times that I was trying to fast. And I remember the second, first time it was successful because people had started, started noticing my aura at the Fry's grocery store next door that we used to live by. Um, but the second time around, I want to say it was the second time, um, it ended up, uh, more or less to my detriment because I couldn't even, uh, 
do any sort of tasks at hand that, you know, just being able to just focus and properly function and use my mental faculties properly to be able to just do and follow through with a task at hand. Mind you, you know, it could have been also, you know, other things too, who knows and whatnot, but I didn't have certain information at the time or I didn't know certain information yet at the time. So, I don't know. You live and learn, so anyway, call it a day. <laughs> Not compared to what I know now, but it's like, even still, I notice it's like, it's not that you're stupid, but it's just kind of like you're, I don't know how to put it. It's like you're still in the process of like healing yourself or whatever, I don't know. Getting out of the freaking rabbit hole and shit. Yeah, it's like I knew, like for example, my mom had told me about lemon water a while back. And around that time, I gravitated to this book on lemons, just in specifically. So basically helping your body to detox. And I don't know if I still have the book. I might have lost it or something. I don't know. <laughs> but no, I don't, I, you know... I ended up having to be in the situation I'm in. I didn't have a choice at the time, like I said, because my mom had passed away. Um, you know, so I ran out of financial assistance. And of course, too, um, you know, I ended up stocking up on stuff because we were doing a lot of uh, doomsday prepping. So I know people like to think I'm just like this hoarder. Or it's just hoarding behavior or some shit like other shit like that. Instead of also just looking at it as like doomsday prepping. So I don't know. Ending the age of Pisces, going into the age of Aquarius. I kind of like thought that was just kind of more or less a no-brainer. Especially considering I'm an individual on the cusp of Pisces and Aries. <laughs> anyway, people's true colors come out behind closed doors. Um, I'm not exempt from this fact, nor is anyone else. So, you know, to each their own in the end of the day, I am not perfect. But at the same time, like I said, God forces whatever is in your subconscious to the forefront. And people will trigger you. It's just bound to happen. It's been happening. I've been, I've been triggered many times. I'm, I know I'm not the only one. It is what it is. You end up making an a complete ass and a fool of yourself. But at the same time, whatever needs to be said just needs to be said. So, you know, the truth isn't uh, pretty. It's not meant to, like, appease uh, appease people's palates or uh, 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 be agreeable or cordial. It's, like, not about keeping up with the Joneses. It's just about you being you and also, too, you're being forced to speak up to alchemize as well. I got some uh, Alfredo pork cheese.